chance to ask for a campaign with the confidence rising. I told WDF, don't switch good times are coming on E50 diving. Fan cams, reactions, watch along to the pride of London thriving. The Eagles of South, they flying. Keep your eyes on us, we ain't hiding. Good evening, everyone. Hope you're good. Hope you're well. It's a uh, good Friday for those who believe in that. And um, it's the Easter weekend and football is back after a three week break for us, two for some. And um, some really crappy football from England. <laughs> <laughs> JC, fresh from his holiday, fresh tan. What are you saying? Eagle had burned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm good, man. Uh, feels weird being away from it all for a little while, but you know we're back. One hundred percent. We got the the tactician down below, Statman Dan. How's it going? Yeah, all good. Uh, looking forward to this nice long Easter weekend. Although I am working on Monday, so not that long. <laughs> don't complain. You get like time and a half of that, so don't try it. <laughs> <laughs> And representing our right or our opponents on Saturday. Oh, snap, it's tomorrow, isn't it? It, feel, it, doesn't, sorry, it doesn't feel like a Friday at all, by the way. Um, welcome, Dave Asprey. How, how you doing, mate? Yeah, it's uh, it's good to be here, Rich. Good to see the boys. And uh, good to be talking about real football again, because the uh, the England... I didn't watch the England games. So I just couldn't bring myself to bother. <laughs> I think I was... I think I spent one night cutting my toenails and the other cleaning the sink. So I didn't <laughs> You probably had a great time, one hundred percent. It was probably um, more. Re- it was more rewarding, Rich, than watching two meaningless games. That you know. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But we're here to talk Premiership football. And we're going to start obviously with Forest. Before we talk about this points deduction you've had, <laughs> <laughs> obviously you've changed from Cooper to, to Nuno. There was rumours mm. that Cooper was going to come to us. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Um, but how have you found it under Nuno? I think the football's been better, Rich, to be honest with you. It's been a bit more front foot, but the manager bounce that we had from beating Newcastle away on Boxing Day and then Manchester United four days later has kind of fizzled out a little. And, um, you know, the certain problems still persist. Our weakness at set pieces, our inability to hold on to leads... Um, you know, I think, <laughs> we, we ain't no better. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> maybe I'm preaching to the converted, but you know, I mean, that's why we're in the position we're in. Um, you know, you can say points deductions and stuff, but I, I, I think I read a stat about us either last week or uh, you know, the, the weekend of the Luton game where we sort of conceded or given away 20 odd, 21 or 23 points from winning positions now. You get you get half of those back, and a four point de- a four point deduction is is utterly meaningless, really. So um, we're in the position we're in because we're not good enough, really. I think that's the only way to look at it. But I do feel yeah. there's been a more. I mean, it's it's a marginal thing. There's been more of a, an attacking mindset under Nuno than there was under Steve. To be honest with you, Rich. Just quickly, Dan, what's how many points have we lost from winning positions? Um, I don't know the exact number, but I know, I think it was before the Luton game. I think it was, if we, if the game, if games ended at like 75 minutes would be like seventh or something stupid like that. <laughs> um, so I don't, I don't know the number of points, but yeah, it's not, I think, I think off the top of my head, I think it was 18 before the Luton game. So it might be 20, but it's not, mm. not far off of. Forest, to be fair, but I think yeah. everything that Dave said it, to me, it feels like I'm talking to another Palace fan. <laughs> 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 like, uh... you're, getting, you're getting Dave tonight, JC, and D, instead of D, mate. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it's like, um, yeah, and, and actually, there, there are. I think there are parallels between the two teams. Really, I mean, you know, with us, it's <laughs> JC say what well, Palace would be what, mate, eighth or something in the table if they gave it all those points. I think we beat like. Somebody said we'd be seventh or eighth ourselves. So it, it, you know, it's all well and good getting into good positions in games, but you just got to see the job out. And that really, I mean, I, I go back a couple of weeks or three weeks to the Liverpool game at our place where I thought we played really, really well. 
and we found a way to lose and Liverpool were below par and found a way to win and that's why them and City and Arsenal are in a class of their own I think at the moment yeah, you know definitely. that that kind of segues nicely into um I've seen from a lot of like Forest fan TV tweets as well particularly like the refs have not really been on your side like what what are the standout moments in games where you thought no the ref have really have, have done those over here well, to be honest with you, lads, um, <laughs> there's a litany of these things. It's like, a, you, you know, you write them down and you end up like unfurling a medieval scroll or something. <laughs> and basically, um, <laughs> there's the uh, Paul Tierney against Liverpool. He should have given the ball back to us. Um, yeah, that's a big, yeah. we, we had the ball. Callum hudson Adoy had the ball just outside Liverpool's box. His eye was drawn to Kermin Kelleher smacking Ibrahim Kanati on the head. And he gave the ball back to Liverpool, which is wrong, actually. And then against uh, against that team that you three hate, and I won't mention, down the <laughs> stadium, um, Nico Williams was the subject of a dreadful tackle by Mr Moda, who himself said after the game he was lucky not to be sent off. So that was one. Against uh, Bournemouth at home at Christmas. Willie Bowley. Christmas. Willie Bowley, mate. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Our big Willie was sent from the field, which. <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen, Not gentlemen, I, I expect better of back of the nest, honestly. <laughs> it's amazing how many times I use that phrase to describe a large Ivorian centre, centre off. Well, I, I think it's a cracking good lad. And the number of giggles you get from it. But, so there's those three. What I'll say to you, lads, is there's a Forest fanzine that does the rounds. It's a good one called Oh, uh, oh Mr. Rolling In. And their issue that's out for tomorrow's match has got all the Forest's grievances on the front cover. So all these decisions and things that have gone against us and it's all VAR and all this kind of stuff, you know. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm conflicted. My view is they're all in the past. None of them can be altered. They're, you know, they're, they're stuck in time. Can't be dealt with. We have to move forward. All I care about is the Crystal Palace at home tomorrow and that which has gone can't be altered. But at the same time, you can understand why so many of our population are feeling as if there's some kind of conspiracy, really. Because when you when you actually document these things, it looks like a charge sheet of grievances, really. But as far as I'm concerned, they're in the past. I can do, you know, give me the grace to control what I can control. I can't control any of that. What I can control is my support for my beloved team tomorrow in a very tough match. In a, in a what I believe will be a great atmosphere, really. No, absolutely. And um, <clears throat> I mean, JC, Dan, <laughs> this ain't an easy game for us. Like, we we, we don't win at the city ground for some reason. Um, <laughs> JC, just quickly, how, how do you think we can turn that around? Um, I mean. I would say, oh, we've got we've got good players, but even the last time we played them, we had Zaha, Eze, Elise, and Will fall <laughs> on the pitch at the same time. Yeah. And to be fair, I've I've still I've still got a feeling that if if Will scores that penalty, I think we go on to yeah. win that game. Yeah, agree. But whether it's a luck thing, whether it's a mentality thing, or maybe it's just a freak um, like coincidence that we just never win there. But it is a very hard place to go. Um, I think when me Dan, I think when we went, uh, was it last year or the year before? But yeah, last season. I think mean. it was a great atmosphere there. The Forest fans really get behind the the team, sort of on on that on on the area on the um, the stand where the Palace fans are. It sort of swoops around like two tiers, yeah, yeah. very loud yeah, yeah. down there. Yeah, yeah. And the fans are very close to the pitch as well, so mm. it's a hard place to go. But we we need, unfortunately, both teams need three points here. And whether you've got friends or or what that are Forest fans, you just need to be selfish here. We need to get some three points done <laughs> because we know what Nuno can do, and we know what he can't do. We've seen him at Spurs a bit out of his depth, but then we've also seen him at Wolves take him to the Europa League in the first season or coming up into the Premier League. So he's got ideas. He's he, he's a good coach. It's just that he's not good all the time. He does make some blunders sometimes, but we have to try and take advantage of this. And 
with how Glasner plays, it's very similar to how Nuno plays. So it might be a bit of a... I'd like to think it'll be a good game to watch, but I know it's going to be dreadful. <laughs> Cancelling each other out, JC, maybe. Mm -hmm. That's exactly yeah, what I'm thinking. I know, Dan, obviously you shared your thoughts earlier on in the week with, with Tat Eagle. Um, with, with the news of what Oli Glasner shared regarding our team, do, do you think we should just store up that same attacking prowess that you thought before? Wait, has he gone? I think he's frozen. Shorting the kids out, I think. <laughs> <laughs> he put himself on hold Hi, while he sorts his feet. <laughs> Am I back now? Oh, you're yeah. so lucky. <laughs> you are so lucky. You know, the thing is, right, I've been using this computer basically all day. <laughs> yeah, make a song back. It's like Norman Cully's <laughs> microphone. I look at his mug. <laughs> look at a mug at him. It is doomed. <laughs> <laughs> right, Dave, we'll come back to you. Now, okay, I won't lie to you. I'm sorry you got a four-point deduction, but I'm happy you got a four-point deduction. Yeah, 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 yeah. On a selfish aspect, because it just means Absolutely. that it's a bigger distance from, from us. Yeah. Uh, but what, what's your thoughts on it, in general? We broke the rules, Rich, and uh, we take the punishment. And... Uh, I, you know, we've us two have spoken on Twelfth Man, and you know me, Rich. I, I want my club to have the moral high ground. I want other people outside of my club to look in on Nottingham Forest and think they're a good bunch, well run. But you know, the points deduction is what it is. I mean, I, I said uh, when on streams, you know, people people sort of pointed the question at me, "What do you think?" And I said, I was resigned to six. Um, mm. it, it came down to four because Forest were transparent and cooperative in every aspect of the uh, commission's findings forest forest said nothing so you know in that way they kind of earned themselves two points off but uh, the whole thing i mean it, it's a subject for whole other shows as you lads know i don't propose to go on about it now because i want i want to talk about you know, 11 Crystal Palace lads and 11 Nottingham Forest lads moving a ball around a beautiful piece of green turf tomorrow. That's what it's all about. I don't want to talk about the movement of money and business and finance. The most dull, oh, it's duller than anything, that. But the thing was, the, Pre the Premier League came out, Forest, wanting a points deduction of eight when, like, it's nine for insolvency. So I think I think eventually they arrived at, you know, the pendulum swung and they finally arrived at a sort of a compromise position. It is what it is. And, um, you know, I don't think we're fully out of the woods yet. I think, you know, I've read that we might have to sell some other players uh, after the end of this season. You know, some big name, maybe Morgan Gibbs-White or, you know, somebody like that, Nico Williams possibly, in order for us not to pick up any more points down the road. But, Rich, my view is we broke the rules. It is what it is. I mean, I could come on here and, and think, well, you know, Nottingham Forest have a divine right not to have a point. To point to, I, I don't do entitlement. If I come, if I if I come on an opposition view show, and I'm like Forest will win because I love them, I'm going to look like an idiot, and I don't want to do that. I come on, my view is I, I want I want as, as often as I can, uh, as is possible, to take an objective view of my club. We broke the rules. I mean, the thing is, we were allowed sixty one million pound of losses. We went over that by thirty four point five. It's not you know a tenner or fifty quid. It's thirty four point five million. It is a hefty amount of money. It is what it is. We've taken it. We we have to move on. Let's just get back to playing football now. What I'm, it, the way it ties in with the football for me, Rich, is um, if you look at Everton, Everton had 10 taken off and got them back pretty much within three weeks. They went on a run. So I've, I'm hoping that Forrest will add that to this list of perceived injustices and think right. We're gonna we're gonna show these people what we're about. I hope we would do it the other week at Brighton after the Liverpool game. There's always talk about Tierney decision against Liverpool. Forest then went to Brighton and were unbelievably passive. It was deeply disappointing. You know, I wanted I wanted some kind of reaction and we didn't get it. I'm hoping that our reaction we've got and we need a nine game reaction now to the end of the season. I hope it starts tomorrow, but time will tell me. Yeah, absolutely, JC. I mean. <clears throat> 
it's also probably the worst time to place Forest, being the first team after the points deduction. You know, um, how best are we going to be able to silence this crowd? Because they're going to be well up for it. Uh, well, I think if we get any penalty scoring them, will be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think, um, I think what I think I would like to say one thing about what you just said um, before that um, but, you know you get your new manager, the points happen, you're thinking they'll be a bit. Mm. We are still kind of seeing that with our players, still a little bit traumatized from what Roy's taught them, and we still go back into our shell even under Glasner a little bit. So I think maybe that's sort of a similar situation to you and Steve Cooper, maybe that you still mm. got maybe mm. his mindset of five at the back, stay solid. And hope for the best kind of football, but the way to beat Forest, we'll, we'll only know when once the football's kicked. We'll know. We 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 as Palace fans know after the after the first kick and after the first five minutes, we know what kind of game we're in for. We're either gonna be dominant or we're gonna be extremely passive, and we're gonna wait for Forest to do something and counterattack them. We know whether we're gonna be on point of our passing or not. And to be fair. Um, certain players were missing from Glasner's press conference, so I'm not exactly sure who were like, our options up front are because Edward, yeah. uh, obviously Mateta is definitely the the guy, the go to striker at the moment. Mm. But Mateta mm. gasses at 60 minutes, week in, week mm. out, and we and he's going to have to play the whole game. Leave that there. Leave that there. Leave if there. if Edward's still out, yeah. really, and. It's going to be a tough game. I'm not exactly sure how to beat them, but I think that I think France is I think France is back, isn't he? As well, I'm not exactly sure. So that's another player that wasn't mentioned. Like Glasner literally just said, "Everyone's back." It's just Sam Johnston's injured, and obviously he mentioned Elise, um, Czech, and and Mark. So I'm assuming. Assuming they're back. <laughs> well, I mean, no mm. news should mean good news, maybe. Mm, or yeah, that's, that's what I'm hoping. True. But true. the fact that he's come out and stated Munoz is fit is probably the biggest piece of good news I've heard all week, mm. really. Because him mm. get him scoring that screamer for uh, Colombia <laughs> and then getting taken <laughs> off the next game for a precaution injury. He's been our best player since we signed him. And mm. Everyone's stressed. <laughs> oh yeah, I was far more worried about him being injured than than Sam Johnson. The, Not gonna the, lie. The, the, the mm. thing, the thing is though, I was a little bit intrigued, thinking, would he actually play Imre? Because I was actually a bit intrigued at that point. But there, there, there's 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 one thing that's really concerning me about this football match is Dean Henderson. He's going to play in goal for us. He's been dreadful for us. And he's also ex Forest. And we like him. <laughs> Wait, all right, I, I wouldn't say he's been dreadful. I just think yeah, he can't think kick. When, when, he, <laughs> yeah. when he started, he's I thought played, he was decent. He's played eight games and conceded 20 goals. Oh, geez, yeah. yeah, but that's that. To be fair, our defending was pretty poor. Yeah, but I'm, still I'm, willing, I'm, willing, I'm willing to give him. A second chance post Roy because I think I think I, Roy did, I think I think Roy destroyed a lot of people's confidence. I'm not gonna lie. I agree, <laughs> but we know how certain pe- certain players are when they play against us, and this guy's playing in goal now, so <laughs> he could be <laughs> a self sabotage thing to an extreme here. You just never know. Let, let's just hope he's got a point to prove. Now, Dave, just before we go into the comment section and do a combined eleven, I know you've already said it to me, but. We'll get you to obviously share that uh, to the community. What what's your injuries like? Um, not too bad, I don't think. We, you know, quite a few of ours have come back recently. There, there was a point towards the end of Afcon where there were there were a bunch of people out, but they seem to be coming back. Nuno, I think Nuno got angry with a few today. Let's have you back. Let's have you back playing. So Sangari is back, but he's been nothing like living up to the hype uh, um, that was generated when he when he joined us. So he's back. Ola Aina is still out, but I think Harry Toffolo will keep him out of the team. And um, yeah, apart from that, I think Taiwo. Taiwo is out 
which is a blow. Is he one that you're looking to sell in the summer? We'll take him. <laughs> I think, you know Rich, I, 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 when I'm not looking to sell anybody. <laughs> some, some, I, I love these lads. I don't want them to leave my club. I think the world of them. You know, I'm, a, I'm a, at an age, Rich, as you know, where all these lads who play for Forest are essentially my Gary Baldy red clad nephews, and I don't want to lose any of them. You know, it's a family thing. But I do think, you know, Tyler would would would, would probably have to be sold in the, in the, in the uh, in the summer if these vibes that are coming out proved to be correct. The only problem with Tyro is lovely lad though he is, he does pick up a niggle of an injury every now and then, you know, and it, it it's really it galling. But fits our know. criteria perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> I, do you know what? Do you know what, lads? I feel like I've walked into a Crystal Palace uh, check-in centre and there's a therapy session <laughs> going on. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> but, it's but like it's, every it's, week with us. <laughs> but you know, but you know what, lads? I've done a pod already uh, previewing tomorrow's match. From our point of view, and so many of the things that I'm hearing from you guys, we said on ours, and that's why the two of us, you know, you lads and, and us here at the city ground, are in that that part of the that part of the table. We have flaws that yeah. we need to address, and and you know they they're kind of a lot of them are quite glaring, really. No, absolutely, JC. Let's run through some comments. Got quite a few of them. Uh, yeah, quite a few. Big up Luke saying I'm thinking uh one nil Forest or one one, not confident, especially if, especially with Johnstone out and Munoz too. I'm the, I'm guessing he probably wrote this before uh Glasner's presser. Uh according to Prem injuries, Munoz has passed his fitness test. I'm looking at that website now and they're saying Iwoni is injured, Ain is injured, Tavares is injured. This is mm -hmm. Chris Wood can return in this game. Uh, yeah. Bowley's got a 25% chance of playing and Montiel was injured. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. Yeah, Woody, Woody did play at, at Luton, though, which was a big surprise. And he scored as well. So um, he got minutes, you know, in his legs and then he's had a break since, uh, unless New Zealand were playing a, a friendly against Tahiti or Bali or whoever they were, you know. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's, that, that is about right. And, um, JC's more informed about our injuries than I am, which doesn't really say a lot for me. I've, I've just I've just googled it. If I'm really honest, so. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't think I know. I know a lot. I just, I just googled stuff. <laughs> uh, chairman here saying evening. Big up Pat saying big up Rich T to go Dan Guardiola and Dave. Uh, we have to win this and defuse the drought at the Forest Ground. Uh, saying pause. It's a hard place to go. I mean, it is, but you're reaching with that pause, I have to say. Yeah, that is a bit of a reach. <laughs> <laughs> Another three off. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> uh, well, my Palestinians are coming out tonight. <laughs> I think it's given that the initial point deduction always gets halved. Uh, Luke's saying it'll be 1-1. One, one. Munoz masterclass incoming if he starts, or he's hopefully starting. Uh, looks like Dan's got <laughs> gremlins. I've been, I've been using the computer absolutely fine all day. All day, been completely fine. Been streaming stuff, watching YouTube. As soon as I start this. <laughs> uh, Mitch here. Says, I don't know if you should be admitting that you're streaming stuff, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was watching. I was watching Game of Thrones. To be fair, oh, legally or <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah, of course. <laughs> hey, Mr. Dad, Dad. The FBI, open up. <laughs> uh, still not over the looting game yet. If you can't tell, I, I don't think any of us are. Uh, kind of want a penalty for the unfairness from VAR towards Forest. But for Dayscape, please do not do this. Uh, to figure out section towards the Prem, FA, and the Forest fans. I uh, don't think France uh, is in Glasner's thoughts to start, so may not need to mention him. Uh, likely starters might get free in the Forest team. Uh, big up all. Do you reckon Schlatt will play on better under Oliver Glasner? I hope he never steps on a football pitch again. <laughs> <laughs> That's him dealt now, with. <laughs> however, I mean, I wouldn't. I would like him to playing in the inverted ten means he doesn't have to do any defensive duties. I would like. I would. I would be 
morbidly curious to see what he would do in Mitchell's position going up the pitch. Yeah. Uh, I, oh, but then defensively. Uh... I'm, I'm only I'm only saying that because I've seen Schlapp score from left back quite a bit when he used to play left back for us, when he used to play left back for Leicester as well. So we know that when he gets the ball at his feet, he can drive at people. And that's something that Mitchell just cannot do. So I would be quite curious to see having wing backs with Schlupp and, and Munoz, how that would, what, what would happen really. Because I know that we're going to be vulnerable defensively, but if we're playing against someone that we should be smashing, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind it. I'd rather Franco Ume. Oh, man. I would want to see him on the wing, though, or in one of the 10 positions. I think he's much better higher up the pitch. Granted, he can play that left wing back role, but for Ireland, he plays as a left winger and he scored a banger the other day. <laughs> so I'd, I wouldn't want to waste his talents. Yeah. Uh, I take a draw at this game. Uh, I think we both wanted a draw, but we don't want the same result as Luton. Uh, yeah, we're all hoping Spurs batter them. Yeah. Yes, please. We're just hoping Spurs batter them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you, and, you, me, and everybody in the gate post, mate. <laughs> Literally. All right, Jesse, let's run this uh, combined 11. So, here is what we do the combined 11. Basically, we ask you to put your combined 11 in there, but you have to have at least three players from each team. So you can't have a full Palace team. You have to have at least three Forest players in there. Only caveat there is that everyone you pick has to be available for this upcoming game. Oh, that changes things. So. Yeah, I didn't think I'd mention that until the stream. <laughs> Give me that, that, eff that effect there, Dave. There you go. Now it's got you thinking. <laughs> It's just, uh, Richie, it's just one change, mate. Um, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so, That's what we'll do is, first off, I'll ask you what formation would you like? Uh, I'm going to go... Uh, is it 4 one is it? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I just think of... <laughs> do you know what, lads? I'm, I'm old school. I just think of 11. <laughs> um, I think the best thing is if I go through the names of them, we kind of do it uh, arse over tit and we go, go uh, names first. But um, do you want me to start? Yeah, just, let's go to the go goalkeeper first. Let's, let's see, let's oh, see what we're about my, to get ourselves okay. into. Right, yeah, they're lads. always in the same place, thankfully. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you <laughs> lads, my, my original choice for goalkeeper in this match was Sam Johnston. But, yeah, he has sent me the 11 to be fair. Yeah, but I'm going to put Matt's cells in now. Um, Matt, who cells S E L S, he's a Belgian goalkeeper. He played against England, yeah, that's him. Matt cells, all right. Uh, left back or whoever you want to say next, uh, right. So, left back, Tyrick Mitchell. Uh, right back. Nico Williams. Uh, centre backs. Uh, Joachim Anderson. And uh, Willy Bolly. Uh, who joined in your midfield? Uh, Jefferson Lerma. Um, Eberechi Eze. Yep. Uh, Morgan Gibbs White. Yep. Uh, Chris Wood up front, centre forward. And your wingers. Uh, Jordan Ayu. Uh, and Callum Hudson Odoi. Interesting. So, let me just, let me just, let me just, <laughs> no, no, Callum Hudson Odoi for me. Interestingly, when I first picked it, Rich, the one I said to you had 
six palace and five forest and because sam johnson's injured it's now six forest five <laughs> palace so you know forgive me for that lads but if sam was fit palace would have won my combined 11 mm -hmm. uh, things so, you know but yeah that to be honest i just i just looked at each position and paired them up so for example left back i paired up harry toffolo and tyrick i went to tyrick um you know Joachim anderson would have to be i think you know if you, you talked about the four names you lads if if johnston was fit he'd be in if elise was fit he'd be in if mark gurhey was fit he'd be in because i think he's quality that guy don't worry, Dave. You're going to do one with everyone. If everyone's fit, you're going to do another one. So you're going to do that. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, the, the truth of the matter is, if I was to kind of a fully fit Palace 11 and a fully fit Forest 11, I would lean more towards Palace players. There'd be some Forest people so get into it. Yeah, but, but there'd be, I think, the bulk. I mean, if somebody said to me, you can have Michael Elise and Eberechi say oh yes please that's all my Christmas has come at once I love those guys I think they're superb players Jefferson Lerma I think he's he's better than anybody in our midfield so this is where I you know again lads what I won't come on here and do is just you know I love Forest so everything about Forest is great you know mm -hmm. I, I probably, the truth of the matter is you guys are a few points higher up the table than we are and if tables don't lie that says that you're a slightly better team than we are based on what has gone before so uh, that's that's where I uh, where I come at it, mate. Mm -hmm. So if we was going to go through this again and say everyone's fit, who's going in here and replacing who? Um, I think that uh, <laughs> yeah, he comes in. He comes in for Callum Munson. He comes in for Callum Munson or oh, no, actually, I think he comes in for Jordan Ayew. Yeah. So the way you've changed it there, JC is right. I think uh, I'd swap. Uh, Bolly for Gurhi. Don't you have a centre back? Really, is it Murillo? Murillo. Yeah, Murillo. Yeah. Who you lads might remember went on that unbelievable run at Sellers Park. Yeah, I, I like it. Yeah. He's, I think he's yeah, good. He. I just don't. I think he, he could be better in the air. He's a good footballer. He's good right. with the ball at his feet. But I just think as an aerial presence. Mm. He hasn't got that, and you know, Marilla doesn't. It's play a shame that Mateta can't head off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if you ask me, it'd be for his side, it'd be, it'd be Willie against Mateta tomorrow. I mean, in terms of Marillo, um, you know, Mark Gurhey's an international defender. For me, Mark, Mark Gurhey, and I'm not, I'm not blowing smoke up Crystal Palace bottoms here, just because I'm on the show with you lads. Mark Gurhey would be in my England team every time. My back two would be John Stones and Mark Gurhey every time. Unfortunately, we have a conservative, cautious manager who can't see that Mark Gurhey is way better than the... the I mean, Harry, Harry Maguire, smashing lad, tries hard, but he's about as mobile as a wardrobe, right? <laughs> Just not good enough. <laughs> so, for, for me, uh, we, we came to your place earlier in the season. I thought we were the better team in a nil-nil draw. But what I do distinctly remember at the time is you lads had a really severe injury crisis. I think, and it actually got worse during the game. One of your lads had to come off, and and I kind of felt that the key to the game were at the time with Mark Gurhey and Joachim Anderson, and so it proved. You know, it, without those two, I think we'd have won that match. I mean, Morgan had a fantastic chance. Murillo had the run. There were other chances for Forrest. Toflo had a shot, but it, it, it we we kind of founded on the rock of of Gurhey and Anderson. I think I think they're a really good combination, honestly. And uh, I'm a big fan of Gertie, as I am of Alise and Eze, you know what I mean? I think they're really good players. Um, yeah, so I, I've, I've changed Lerma for you. Yeah. For yeah, Decore. Yeah. I think that's... Yeah. yeah I would and, have done and, that. I mean, I, looking from afar, you know, looking from a, a distance away from sort of Sellers Park, I know there's a lot of talk. I've listened to Dee earlier in the season saying that the, the loss of Czech Decore is a really big blow for you, lads, you know what I mean? And, and do, you, do you, do you, as a collective, as a consensus, you feel that Dukure is a better player in midfield than Jefferson Lerma? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I think Lerma Lerma is a brilliant player, but Dukure is just he, he'll he'll yeah. play for he'll play for he'll go on to play for a bigger club than us, definitely. Yeah. Well, right. Liverpool already tried to snatch him for like sixty odd million in the summer. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Didn't they? So mm. the good thing is he's just signed a new deal, so it could be like seventy or eighty. 
if he goes in the window now, which is which is yeah, we're, we're, we're a bit of release clause merchants right now, but <laughs> <laughs> as long as we can get more money from down the line, that's all that matters, yeah. really. We could potentially be losing at least a Ebbs, Czech, and Mark this this summer. I think we're going to lose two of them. Yeah, I don't think we'll lose all. Yeah, we definitely won't lose all of them. I think two is probably about right. I, I think I think we'll lose Eze and Mark. If you're going to ask me, I think those are the two that will go. Hmm. You think Michael won't be tempted to go somewhere else? I think that the people looking at him aren't on his radar. I think he's looking for PSG Madrid or City. That's what I think right. you know, he's on the line for. But the people in for him are like Chelsea. And I don't think he would want to play second fiddle to Cole Palmer right now. No, no. And he wouldn't go to Cole, Arsenal. Cole Palmer could play in the 10, though. <laughs> yeah, but they've got Cuckoo who can play in the 10 as well. Because Cuckoo's not, he's stick, not a striker, though. That's, that's the yeah, thing. That he he right. played left wing 10 for Leverkusen. He never... I'm, I'm not Leverkusen. Yeah, to be fair, yeah, to be fair to Michael, he'd be smart not to go to Chelsea. Yeah. He's just got too many yeah, and, and also, there's no point going to Arsenal because they're not going to drop Saka for him, are they? Yeah. I think um, Elise is the youngest of all... Of, I think he's the youngest of all of them as well. So I think... Mm. That also helps him. Like by the time he, the end of next summer, he'll only be twenty three still. So he's yeah. still got time Mark's, on his side. Mark's twenty two as well, isn't he? Yeah, hmm. I think the core is twenty three as well. So the core is not that old. These players are actually young. You know? I forgot how young they are. Well, okay. well, well, we're not even talking about Adam Wharton, who's twenty. Yeah, yeah, he's going to be a good player. Him, that lad. Yeah, I saw, I saw him. For, I saw him for Blackburn in the. In the Carabao, actually, we won, we won four one at, at Ewood just before Christmas. So the first game after the World Cup had ended, and uh, even though Forrest thumped Blackburn mainly through Brennan Johnson, I thought Young Wharton looked a really good prospect. But the thing is, lads, I'm now looking at that team, and there's still <laughs> it's still quite a nice balance of five Forrest and, and six Ballish, you know. And I don't I, I don't think I would personally speaking I wouldn't move away from that eleven. I think that is probably. The best eleven with everybody fit, you know. I would make two t- two changes. I feel. Uh, to, to, to I'll do. put I want you up top. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Would you say Munoz? And your Munoz at right back. Right. That's the only two changes I'll make. But that's just me personally, anyway. But yeah, if you don't need to get rid of a striker, we will take Tyro. Hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he said. Uh, yeah, I love him. He's such a good lad. The, the only, like I say, they're rich. The only trouble with Tyro, he, he is prone to a knock, but maybe that's just the way he is and the way he plays. He, he What he's done since he come to Forest. I mean, I watched his highlight reel from you know that, that season when he was at Union Berlin, and it seemed like he needed a ball sort of over the top to run onto um, to be effective. But I think what's happened is, and I, Steve Cooper has to take the credit for it, he's taught Tyro to become a a hold-up player playing with his back to goal and bringing other people into the game, and I and you know we've seen that uh, several times. I mean, last year we scored a goal against uh, Brighton at the City Ground towards the end of last season, where Tyros held the ball up, he's played it around the corner, and Danilo was run on and stuck it in the back of the net. So Tyro has become a better all-round player, but you know he's in the trenches up front and he's going to pick knocks up, and he just seems to be a little bit. Uh, injury prone. If he can, if he can get that out of his his chemistry, then you know mm-hmm. he, he's a he's a player of immense potential and talent. You know, yeah. There, there was so, a period me, of time oh when um, me and Dan were doing tax eagles, and there was a a point in time where I think Iwonian, uh I think it was Iwonian Dominguez. They sort of played very similar to Calvert Lewin and Decore. Where one yeah, would yeah. down to the other and they're just slapping yeah, it as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, those two are really good working together as like a hold mm. up, like a one two kind, yeah. of, kind of duo. Yeah, yeah. I think for me, the, the the goal, I'm going to say the goal more so than the game, but the goal that sold me as a, was the game at Sellers Park at the end of last season. What yeah. he did to Anderson, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sold. Yeah, I'm sold. yeah. It, 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 do you know what? It was a beautiful ball from Morgan. And then Tyro seemed to kind of twist this way and that about five times before. And he stuck it with his left foot. All I will say to you, gentlemen, is that that day, 
none of us in the away end really noticed because we were singing uh i was stuck in my and head i'm for telling weeks. you I'm, I'm telling you lads i came out of sellers pot the sun was shining the funny thing oh, it was, was a lovely day wasn't it oh it was amazing <laughs> i think the looks on the ballast fans faces were fantastic it was like thousands of us lot there with inflatables People wearing Hawaiian shirts with Jack Goldback's face all over them, Maid Marion's, <laughs> Robin Hood's, you name it. We had, they were like, I've never I, seen so many blokes dressed as women that day. I honestly <laughs> stopped watching the game. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, lads? It, it was like uh, we were singing, 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 Sami Namina and all that music. And then Leeds, Leeds are falling apart. And then Leicester were going down, which obviously we like. And then all of a sudden, uh, excuse me, gentlemen, I don't know if you've noticed, but. Forest have just taken the lead. Have they? Because <laughs> the, the view from the away end was quite narrow. It was like looking through a letterbox and there was a yeah. pillar. And we were just yeah. like... We're, we're working on that. We're working on that. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, what I thought was really, really funny was Forrest with Marinakis and Steve Cooper and everybody, they came over and celebrated in front of us. And then some Bristol Palace officials, very, very politely... With great courtesy, came and said, uh, "Look, Nottingham Forest, um, could you get out of the way so our lads can celebrate on their own pitch?" Forest <laughs> went, oh, "Yeah, sorry, we've got to go." <laughs> what, what I, I also remember it, Brennan Johnson with <laughs> one of those naughty inflatable dolls on the pitch, and it was just—it was a brilliant. It, I, it was my favourite away day in history. Right, it was an amazing day because we were safe, you lot were safe. Elise and Eze were, uh, were terrific, so we could watch them play. Our lads were playing some good stuff. It was a fair result. Sun shone, fantastic stuff. But uh, as regards much of the game, <laughs> I, was, I mean, and, and I'm not a big lad, and there's always like a six foot five guy standing in front of me. You know, I, it's like a human pillar that follows me everywhere at the matches. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I've got, I tell you what, I've been to Sellers Park twice now. I've got so many good memories of it the Murillo run this time and then what happened last year the jerk chicken in the fan zone is absolutely to die for you know so um oh, yeah there's uh, better jerk chicken around the corner i tell you oh that. yeah <laughs> i've heard i've heard yes it's one of the last <laughs> tasty jerk tasty yeah. jerk is yeah oh. yeah yeah so so yeah it's uh it, it's it's always a good trip there you know i mean it's uh it's a cracky thing but tomorrow as we've said is uh it's big business really Big business, JC. Um, a few more comments, and we've actually got Mr. Doran Tor in, in the comments as well. So, big up, Doran he, Tor. He's always checking, guy. he's my gaffer, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pat here saying it's weird how much we love our Irish young stuff. I think that's because all our scouts are in Ireland and Scotland, they don't go very far, to be fair. They yeah, they don't, get, they don't get given a big budget, do they? <laughs> no. but to me it sounds like the only scout that actually gets to go on holiday is Dougie isn't it <laughs> uh, train and bus merchant says oh my palace. gosh oh, it's, my God. Is that? <laughs> it's another iteration <laughs> I think that one's vibes it's got to be vibes that's <laughs> uh, it Munoz uh Pat was here saying that everyone's fit. The Nikki effect now streaming on Netflix. <laughs> well, Nikki's ball knowledge is something that no one needs to talk about. To be fair, <laughs> um, big up everyone. A little late tuning in. This is a must not lose. I think that's for both teams. Yeah, absolutely agree with that. Our whole season went south when Decore got injured. Massive. Yeah, our whole season went wrong when after the looting game because Eze got a long-term injury and Decore yeah. got a long-term injury yeah, within about true. 10 minutes so that was yeah. fun and then we got ar- another... so I'd say you could argue our season went down the toilet when we uh, reappointed Roy <laughs> <laughs> so what, uh, what this season went down where it went to pot last season <laughs> <laughs> if only he'd not kept us up <laughs> yeah uh don't think a big team will come in for Decore or Elise unless they are, have unless they have an injury free season. This is true. Mm-hmm. Munoz, I think Decore is unlikely to go. I'd love to see another season of Elise. Uh sat near the away and for that that game. The Forest fans were mental. Dawn Tor says, My guy Dave, best away day ever. What was the score again? <laughs> <laughs> I could I could remind you of a goal scorer though. 
Do you remember the goal scorer off of Palace? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it, it came to people's... I think the only part of the game where the Forest fans noticed was, oh, God, a bloke who used to put a Derby County shirt on is just a draw the field. <laughs> oh, Will Hines. <laughs> yeah. uh, Ireland is our <laughs> get-around break. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll get around Brexit strategy was meant to be moon and beak, but that's not going well at the moment, is it? Uh, yeah, I can hear the Forest fans going through the, uh, through the TV on the US feed. Any other strikers you think we could, such should go for? I'm, I'm liking the look of that Diacate. I think he looks good. Yeah. The youngster from uh, Rennes. Hey, right, listen, Ian Nacho on a free transfer. That's good squad depth. Yeah. Delinga. To Lee Stryker. Mm -hmm. You heard Bonifaz. it first. Boniface and uh, Gurassi in, in Germany. I, I, oh, yeah. I started watching the, the, the Bundesliga this year and, and Gurassi yeah, and I know Boniface is in Germany. Gurassi's moment, but, quality. Yeah, Gurassi looks really, he's, really good. He's got a very, very low release clause. I think it's like 16 mil. Yeah. But I think yeah, everyone wants him. So that's yeah. him, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think it, uh, the, the most mental transfer policy on earth us i've already had a look at garassi so <laughs> get in the queue yeah the, the talent pool from the bundesliga is stupid mm -hmm. yeah i mean yeah. i've stopped i've only i've only restarted watching it this year lads because I, I watched the highlights program and there's some real good players in that in that league you know I mean, this this lad florian verts at leverkusen oh he's quality oh, he's really so good. I, I, I mean i'm too old <laughs> to use the phrase but i'm going to say baller you know what i mean <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've got grey hair. I shouldn't be using the word bully. You know, I'm not down with the kids, but he looks a really good player. And there's a lot, a lot of, you know, even some of the teams down near the bottom of that league have, have got players. You kind of think, yeah, he could do a job in the Premier League. You know, yeah. But in fact, actually, going expanding on that a little bit, we did explore that, if you like, that talent pool because Musa Niakati came in from Mainz, Oral Mangala, who's since gone on to. Uh, Leon, I think it is, or whoever he came from Stuttgart, Taiwo from Union Berlin, you know. So I think we were, you know, we were one of the first to sort of try and explore that. So, you know, a bit of credit to Forest transport policy in that regard, I think. Absolutely. The Bundesliga is just a good league at the moment, really. Yeah. Even though, even though it might be a war, like a walkover for uh, mm. Bayern Munich most years. I say most years because yeah. it's really level. Shavi Alonso doing that madness. Flying. Yeah, apparently, uh, apparently he's going to stay as well. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's rejected yeah, yeah. Liverpool. I, Liverpool, oh my days, <laughs> Gerard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I genuinely think they were they were banking on Xavi saying, "Yeah, I'll come to you." Yeah, they were. They're probably going to beg Klopp to do another year. Oh, they will. I I, I think it's really good of Xavi Alonso to say no. I respect. I'm him. happy here. Yeah. You know, yeah, building so, something. yeah, exactly. And they've got a really good squad. I mean, he doesn't want to be away from Florian Burtz. He doesn't want to be away from, you know, Victor Boniface and all this. the rest of these lads they've got there. You know, Granite Jack is playing really well for them. I mean, the thing is, it's this idea that it, it's such a rare thing these days, it seems to me, when somebody goes, no, 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 the grass is greener here rather than over mm. there. And I think it's I, fair play to have it. He strikes me as a really classy guy. And I think that that is uh, indicative Mm -hmm. What he's done, I think. Indeed. I think for me, if I was going to give one, one, one of these uh, strikers, I'd say we were linked with him a few years ago, but then he went to Sporting, I think. I'd say Danny Loder. I think he went there, a bit under the radar, and he's been killing it out there for the last few seasons. Mm. Yeah, fair shot. <sighs> Uh, we started the season, we did well, actually. We did. Yeah, we did. yeah, or we beat we United so. and people and teams like that, yeah. didn't we? So, I think I think it was after that game because Ebbs came off that game, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And that's when he had his first injury, and then yeah, we were like, oh man, yeah, bigger Matt for you. And Pat's Googled young player, like young strikers. <laughs> 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 I mean, I never heard of this guy. He might be sick. But, I've never you heard know. of him. I, 
I won't lie. If if we could go to Zarek's comment, if we somehow get Marcus Edwards, yeah, mm. he's he's unbelievable. He's good. I think he's going to cost way too much. Yeah, it's like what, what was the race cost? Like fifty. Yeah, 56 million euros or something like that. Yeah, and I think Spurs wanted him, but Spurs said he was too expensive. And I think mean, yeah. if Tottenham are saying they're too expensive, how but the hell are Palace going to afford him? Is this with the whole aspect of if obviously if Ebbs goes? But I would, I, 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 I would say that you could get Philogene, who will be potentially yeah. better than him. Or I like the fact that we're already. Though. I like the fact that we're already working on that one as well. And yeah. you can have a Philogene or a John Rowe for half the price mm. of him. Yeah, yeah. exactly so, that. You you think about it, you sell Ebbs for that. What was the what was the report the other day? Like eighty mil or something stupid like that. You could probably buy Philogene, Rowe, and and the, and that striker I said, Delinga, for nearly all that money. Mm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, but you know, but the thing is though, if Glasner's requested him, then are they gonna? <laughs> You know, but I, I reckon they'll, they'll probably get that point across. I'll probably say, look, you can have him, or you can have him, him, and him for the same price. Yeah, and then Glasgow's. Really it, prob- it probably means that uh, Amma's gone. Um, I think we'll give France on another couple of years. Because don't forget, we've got Jess still. We've got Ume. It's going to be very interesting how we how we play this. Mm. I think. I think one thing we also need to remember is. We actually need to keep a hold of players purely for squad depth as well, because yeah. the second, pardon me, the second half our first team gets injured. <laughs> it's a long, it's yeah, a long no day. Uh, let's let's fly through the last ones. I watch the Bundesliga every week. You plum. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I see how it is. Uh, Tim it says uh, strikers before centre backs in the summer. I really want Edwards at Palace, but we definitely need a striker. I, mm, I like Edwards, Edwards or have, Christian have, Mascara. Isn't isn't um Peter were relegated now? Or are they close to getting relegated? Yeah, they are actually. So he he would be the cheap league one, now. aren't they? Yeah, so he'd yeah, be cheap be, now. He'll be very so cheap. Ed, Edwards' price would go down. Are you talking about Peterborough, you lads? They lost to Carlisle three one today. Yeah. I think. Or are we? They yeah, they did. Are they? Wait, what? Are they? Are they? Wait. Oh no. I can't yeah, imagine. They're, 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 they're in League One. Yeah, and they got beat by the team who were way adrift at the bottom today. <laughs> at oh, home. Peter, Peter brought fourth. Yeah, but they lost to yeah. Carlisle today. So <laughs> Pompey and Derby are clear at the top. Oh, I thought, I thought they got in the championship. They got relegated last season. Yeah, they got relegated yeah, last yeah. season. So he, so yeah. Edwards would be cheap now. If they don't I, go up, the thing is, I would, I would still, I would still buy Mosquera as well because I think it's strangely, I think it's a very weird coincidence that we're linked with Edwards, who's strangely like Anderson, and mm. Mosquera, who's strangely like Mark. That that that's all I would say. I'd say yeah. if we could get and, them both, do it. Yeah, yeah truly, think we are we are both. playing three at the back now, so we're yeah. gonna need we're gonna need five. We need, 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 need more centre backs. Yeah, Holding's just gonna get in the bin. Let's be real. I forgot he was oh, even a Palace player. That was a, such a stupid signing. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, for, for one million pounds, you might as well. Yeah, it's worth, worth the gamble, I guess. Uh, read an article you're getting for thirty to thirty-five. I still think that's too expensive. Anyway, uh, don't want to talk about strikers until we're hundred percent saving the prem. And last comment. Uh, think of Jordan James at Birmingham. Mm, good lad. Um, yeah. I don't know. I I I think we could probably get better for the for the for the money. Yeah, Dave. Last thing before we wrap up. School prediction. Right. I, let me just consult my phone because I can't remember what I sent to you. Rich. <laughs> did you let me just get it all? Oh yeah, you did actually. Yeah, you did because you have sent all your predictions through. Right. I, I had. Um, I think I had Newcastle and West Ham to draw two two. Oh no! Just yeah. just for our game, by the way. Oh, uh, uh, this game. Sorry, beg your pardon. Yeah. I, re- I wrote all of them out. I probably went do lally. I was probably on one. You know what I mean at the time. No, no, uh, no. We I... do have a predictions league which requires all ten. But ah, you only right, have to okay. mention about. Yeah, yeah. So the first one, um, I've gone for Nottingham Forest one, Crystal Palace nil. 
I'm sorry, lads. No, nah. fair enough. I yeah. just think that the atmosphere in that ground tomorrow is obviously going to be charged after after what's gone on and it also yeah. will be there's another element of emotion that's been added to it and that is during the week we lost um the great larry lloyd who was part of our european cup uh twice european cup team so there's a lot there'll be a, i'd imagine there'll be a minute's silence or at some point during the game a minute's applause for larry so i think that will, will come into play and it's going to be loud and raucous there because we haven't played there since um, the Liverpool game it was the last game that we played at the City Ground, and um, and I think it'll be. I don't think it'll be. I don't. It won't be a classic. I don't think it'll be a game that will be living long in the memory. And I think I just think home advantage will sneak it for us. I don't. In terms in terms of ability between the two teams, I don't think there's very much. I don't. You know. I think. There's like for you, there's Eberesh Yese. For us, there's Morgan Gibbs White. You know, you can look at. I mean, the fact that I picked a combined team where I could have had in in one iteration, I could have had six Palace and five Forest, and then another, I could have six Forest and five Palace. Tells you there's not that much between the two teams. But I just think the noise will will push us to the win. And our need, actually, lads, is far greater than yours. Because our position is much more perilous than yours, with all due respect to where, where you guys are, um, you know. So uh, I just think those are the factors that come into play. Oh, that makes sense. And before I even, before you go, I even forgot. So this is the actual predictions league that we do. All oh, right, okay, mate. Yeah, across the season. So um, yeah, obviously the last set of fixtures there was only five games. Right. Um, uh, so if you get agreed, that means you've got the correct uh, scoreline. If you yeah. orange, you've got the correct result. Um, which means, as it stands, between the Eagle Ad football team, um, yeah, I'm still top. Good I on think you, Rich. he's closed it down to 11 points. Now, he has closed it down to 11 points. Yeah. And there's still, what's it, eight, eight or nine game weeks? So yeah, nine games, still plenty. Right? Still plenty of time. Ten. And the um, Battle of Mid is still taking place. The Battle of Mid is yeah. still there between JC and Dan. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's so mid, it's the same score. <laughs> <laughs> stats, and, stats and damn lies. <laughs> and then obviously the, the battle to not do the forfeit between Nate and Rhea is going to go down to the wire. <laughs> <laughs> The forfeit um, sounds worrying. <laughs> literally, with the added community, um, I've gone back up top um, ahead of Doug, and then manages for it's it's really close. Um, we've already resigned to the fact that so there'll be three forfeits. By the way, this is the second one. OTC, you're doing the forfeit. We know that. And Coltrane, we're gonna find you. You're trying to hide. We're gonna find you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but this is where your one comes in, Dave. Okay, um, mate. So James, a, a Spurs fan, he's got a total of eleven. Uh, points from one crisp score. Basically, you just need to get more than three. Okay, mate. <laughs> I'll see what <laughs> I can do, mate. <laughs> as long as we'll you get more than go. three, you're okay. Yeah. No, and if you, get, okay, if you get more than five, you get bragging rights over Wolfie. <laughs> okay, mate. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 is one of the most um focused mo motivational tools I've ever been handed in my life, mate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thank you very much. I mean. <laughs> I know you've sent me your predictions already, Dave, but yeah. you have got until Saturday. Is it 11 fair? Is there a 12 30 kickoff? Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've got Newcastle. until sa Saturday, 11 30 pm. Yeah. In case I'm you not want to change it. No, right. I'm not going to tweak That's it, mate. I, I, you know, it's, it's a case of I've published so damned. Yeah. Probably shouldn't be damned, mate. You know what I mean? I'm not going to change it now. <laughs> fair it so. is, fair it is. Uh, Dave, listen, thank you so much for, for joining it's us. It's been a evening. real pleasure, yeah. lads. It's been Thanks, fantastic Dave. to be on. Thank you yes, so man. much for having me on. It's been great. And Always. Let's hope we win. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. Seriously, uh, who invited been... this guy? <laughs> <laughs> JC, you need to have a word with Rich, mate. No, seriously, thank you so much for having me on. And uh, much love to all the Palace population and much love to all the Forest population because... You know, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm old school. I'm, I'm probably older than you three put together. My view is 
love of the game above the love of our individual clubs. That's what I always think. So let's hope we have a really good game of football and everybody nice. gets home safe. That's the main thing. Yeah, no, definitely. 100%. Nice one, Dave. All right, lads. Guys, well, um, JC, are you down tomorrow? I'm not, but Chairman is. Uh, oh, we've got to get him to vlog. That would be so funny. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to convince him to. <laughs> oh, no. I can't. I don't know how to do it. I was like, nah. Whatever you can do will be better than Dan's vlog. Oh, fuck off. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm going to go cry now. I didn't, Dan, I didn't, I didn't go off it. screen and cry. All right. We are gremlins. <laughs> All right, cool. Guys, thank you very much for watching. This is the Forest Match Preview with myself, Dan, Rich, and Dave. And as always, up the palace. Up the palace. Here you go. Here you go.